The figure of speech we want to deal with now is synecdoche. You know, when God gave his word, he gave it in language. And so we have to understand language to properly understand the word of God. Now, the best book I know on figures of speech in the Bible is this one here, <laughs> Figures of Speech Used in the Bible, by E.W. Bullinger. And Bullinger talks about synecdoche. In fact, synecdoche is such a common figure that Bullinger has 44 pages of examples of synecdoche from the Bible in his book. Now, synecdoche, for uh, many people would say, well, I've never even heard of synecdoche, but like I said, it's very common and we use it all the time. Here's the way Bulling, uh, here's the way Webster, rather, here's my Webster's Collegiate Dictionary. Here's the way Webster's would define synecdoche. It's a figure of speech by which a part is put for the whole. Like, and then they give examples. 50 sails means 50 ships. Or the whole is put for a part as society is put for high society. Or the species is put for the genus as cutthroat, meaning assassin. The genus for the species as creature for a man, or the name of a material for the thing that is made as boards for a stage. Now, Bollinger would clarify this a little bit, but I think we get the idea that, that generally speaking, a synecdoche is, uh, the easiest way to understand it is when there's a part, it only talks about a part, but it actually means a whole or vice versa where it talks about one thing, but it means all kinds of things, and they call that the species for the genus or the genus for the species. So you're either taking a, a you're describing something big and meaning something little, <laughs> that's funny, or describing something little and meaning something big. And that's one of the reasons why we have to be so sensitive when we read the Bible to the figures. Because if we're just in, in dialogue and we're talking with our friends and, the, and synecdoche is used because of the context and because of our social situation that we know who we're talking to, we're going to understand the synecdoche immediately. But when we use the Bible, when we read the Bible and we're not as familiar with the historical context and the figures in the Bible and the, the biblical world, all of a sudden now we can misinterpret the synecdoches, just like we can misinterpret other figures of speech. And so that's the, the real advantage of learning the figures, learning what they are and, and learning how to recognize them, because it allows us then to make sure that we're not drifting into error in our interpretation of the text. So now Bullinger, as I said, is going to describe synecdoche in, in perhaps more helpful terms to us. It's, he says synecdoche is a figure by which one word receives something from another which is internally associated with it by the connection of two ideas, as when a part of a thing is put by a kind of metonymy for the whole of it or the whole for a part. The difference between metonymy and synecdoche lies in this, that metonymy is the exchange made between two related nouns, while in synecdoche the exchange is made between two associated ideas. And as I said, now Bollinger then has 44 pages of examples to explain what he's just said. But let's give an example of the whole being put for the part. Now, what are we meaning here? We're meaning that we're going to read the Bible and the Bible's going to say everything, and yet there's going to be this thing inside us that's going to say, that's no, 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 that's too big. That, that in synecdoche, there's, there's going to be a reason, an emphasis that God is placing by using the whole, but in reality, the real situation is there's just a part. And I'll give you an example. We just go to Jeremiah chapter 26, verse 9, reading out of the ESV. And it's talking about Jeremiah. It says, all the people gathered around Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. Well, not all the people, not everyone on earth, <laughs> not, not all the people in Israel, not even all the people in Jerusalem, but all the people that had something to do with that situation. So again, What's the emphasis being brought by the figure synecdoche? The emphasis is that, that God is letting you know that, boy, if there are people involved in this situation, they're going to be there. 
and he and he'll do that by synecdoche by saying all the people here's another one uh, remember John the Baptist and how jealous the scribes and Pharisees were of the people being baptized by John Matthew chapter 3 verse 5 this is out of the ESV also then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about the Jordan the Jordan River were going out to him to John to be baptized well now wait a minute all Jerusalem all Judea <laughs> no see this is synecdoche a, a whole being put for a part. The, 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 um, the truth is that there was only part of Jerusalem and part of Judea, but there was such significant numbers that it makes it worth putting the whole there to emphasize how many people there really were. And this is a synecdoche. Um, another kind, slightly different, coming out of 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 9, here's Azael, um, the king of Syria. And it says, So Hazael went to meet him, Elisha, and took a present with him, all kinds of goods of Damascus. And the ESV, and this is the ESV, all kinds of goods. And that's actually, uh, that's actually a translation of the ESV where they translate the synecdoche for us. The Hebrew text reads, Here comes Hazael, and he brings every good thing of Damascus. <laughs> well, I, can't, I mean, is that really true? Did Hazael round up every single good thing in the entire city and bring it? No, he didn't. He didn't. So the ESV picks up the synecdoche properly and, and says um, all kinds of good things. And that's exactly what that means. So the synecdoche is emphasizing the fact that, the, that all of the kinds of good things were represented. Um, and there, there are some more examples like that. Um, now we have another kind of synecdoche. Here's James chapter 2, verse 15, and it says, If a brother or sister be naked, well, no one was running around the streets of Jerusalem with absolutely cl no clothes on. This, this, um, when, when James here is saying, if your brother or sister is naked, He's not expecting us to wait until somebody literally is so destitute they have nothing on at all. That's not what's going on here. Naked, meaning no clothes, is put by synecdoche for they don't have very many clothes or they're scantily clothed. And by the way, that's a common synecdoche in the scripture to use the word naked when it means that they are not properly clothed. They're not fully clothed. Um, in John 21, 7, Peter was said to be naked. He, he wouldn't be where people could see him naked. That Peter would never do that. He's just not out in public where people can see him naked. But he would, he would not have had on the full garment that uh, he would normally have worn. Same thing with Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 20, verse 2, and it says that Isaiah went naked and barefoot. He's not going around completely stripped. Um, he's wearing like his underwear, but he's, it's a synecdoche where the part is put for the whole. He's wearing just a part. Um, or for, you know, another example would be Psalm 1-1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked. Many times in scripture, a man was put for people in general. It doesn't, it certainly isn't excluding women. In Psalm 44, 6, David is talking about uh, trusting and he says, I will not trust in my bow. Now, he's not separating his bow out like, well, I'm not going to trust in my bow because I don't like it, but I'll trust in my sling and in my war club. <laughs> no, that's not what he's saying. When he's saying, I will not trust in my bow, he's using that by synecdoche, one thing to represent the whole, meaning I'm not going to trust in my weapons, I'm not going to trust in my human devices, I'm going to trust in the Lord. Uh, we get the same kind of thing in Genesis 3.19, by the sweat of your face you will eat bread says the Hebrew text. Well, it's not just bread. The fact is it's it, he's saying food. Bread is just one example, and it's put by synecdoche for all of the food. So these are examples of synecdoche where a part is put for the whole, or the whole is put for the part. 
and we need to be able to understand these in the context and in the in the context of the biblical world in order to be able to read and really genuinely understand what the Bible is telling us. Thanks so much for watching this video. Hope you found it helpful and a blessing. If you would like to contribute to the effort of producing these videos and having them go out all over the world, please consider donating at stfonline.org front slash donate. And while you're thinking about things, don't forget to push the subscribe button at the bottom of the screen so you get notified of future videos. God bless.